Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this paper, how to optimize the performance of your RF layout uh, by the process of parameterization and EM optimization. So um, here's a four bullets. I'll start with the objectives. To put a perspective to this talk, I will discuss some case study on coupling effects. And then I will go to the meat of this uh, presentation, the parameterization and optimization. And I will end with useful tips for you for efficient EM optimization process. And I'd like to mention that on the YouTube video, there is uh, more details you can see. And you can download the workspace and the project files and other documents if uh, you look at the video here. So. <clears throat> Just to discuss the objectives with few pictures here, you can see this is a sample of a mimic uh, amplifier. And on the top, you can see the circuit simulation of the gain and the return loss. So you can see everything is meeting specs on the circuit simulation. Uh, but that's not enough. Most of us, or all of us, tend to uh, do EM simulation, planar EM simulation. So when I did EM simulation, notice that my return loss specs are not met. So, and, and other designs, you might have the gain, the power, the efficiency, other specs that are not met when you include the proximity effects and coupling when you do EM simulation. So what do you do? You, you don't want to go back to the circuit simulation and do guesswork to fix it. You basically parameterize and EM optimize the circuit and now with the EM optimization, you have confidence that this is going to meet the specs. And not only that, the process also helps you to shrink your device, to, to, to make it smaller, because all the coupling effects are accounted for in this. So this is what I want to basically discuss with you here. Before I do this, put a little perspective to this topic and show you some case study I did. Uh, last year, I have two spiral inductors. Here's one, two, one, two that are loosely coupled. And I have the same inductors that are tightly coupled. So I have four cases. The only difference here is this is horizontal layout and this is a vertically kind of uh, laid out. Same here, and this is very tightly coupled. Let's look at the EM results of the inductance for all the four cases. So notice the variation in the inductance goes up to 12% difference variation. And I'm not putting statistics, you know, the process variation. When I do that, it probably go up to 20% variation in inductance. But what's really interesting is this structure and this structure are identical. They are the same. Look at it, the same spacing between the spiral. The only difference, it's laid out horizontal. This one laid out vertical. And look at the three and four, difference inductance. There is like 8% difference. So when I saw this result, uh, it's interesting. I went ahead and I built a filter, simple low pass filter with a horizontal structure. And here's the capacitor. And this is the vertical structure, and here's the capacitor. And I simulated them with planar EM, momentum simulation, horizontal, vertical. Look at the results of the blue and the red. Just same exact circuit, but laid out differently, laid horizontal and, and, and vertical. Look at the rejection here at 7 gigahertz, minus 60 dB almost. And here, it's minus 30 dB rejection. So if you want to reject some harmonic, you know, you definitely, the way you lay out your circuit, make a big difference. Look at the 3D bandwidth also. It's different. So this puts a perspective to the, to the talk, really. The, the way you lay out your circuit could surprise you at the end when you fabricate it. And uh, here's a, a sample of a Mimic KU band down converter. Here's a mixer. KU band, and here's a PA, LTE PA. And notice all the structures of the spirals, what I just showed you, the vertical and the horizontal structures. So whatever you simulate when you do the circuit simulation could surprise you when you actually fabricate this because of this 
layout, horizontal, vertical, the coupling. So it's, it's really interesting. In fact, I, I did take this part, the PA, and notice that the PA, the input, there is this two spirals, vertical of the PA. So I took that PA, and here's the vertical spirals on the PA. And I did some EM simulation and notice the S11, the return loss, how it shifted in frequency due to that coupling effect and the vertical structure. So, so this will take me now to the meat of the presentation is go back to that initial uh, mimic PA I showed you. And I want to show you how I parameterize this and EM optimize it because that's what you want to do before you go into fabrication. You have a schematic and you have a layout of the circuit and it, the circuit simulation meets specs. So here's the schematic. You pick the components that you want that affects your goals that you want to optimize and you open the design parameters and you type in those components, C1, input matching network LP, and you put the default value. This is how you parameterize your, com your design. You pick some components that you want to optimize using EM optimization. Once you type them in, they're already included in the layout. So you don't have to do the process again. And what's nice, when you do that parameterization, you will, at the top level here, you will see these parameters already included in the top level cell. And this allow you to choose those parameters and do optimization to, to it. So here's my amp and I have the top level amp with the components and I put optimization to it here. I have the optimization controller and the goals for gain S11, S22 goals. And I launched the optimization cockpit. So once you launch the optimization, but now it is optimizing and running momentum at the same time, not circuit simulation, because I use the EM view, EM COSIM. So now it's running momentum, optimizing, running momentum, optimizing. And notice this layout has been created automatically, this second layout. And this, during the process, this layout basically meshes, it does the meshing, does the optimization, the EM simulation, and notice now the next slide how the, it changes. Every time it goes to optimization trial, it changes, you see? Now it's meshing this circuit and trying to see if I meet my goals. So go back, go forward, so you can see it changes while EM simulation and optimization is running. And at the end of the process, you will you notice here how my return loss now in solid, red and blue, the solid, I met my specs. And, and this would give me confidence because it is EM simulation. It's accounting accurately for the coupling, proximity effects and everything. So here's my gain and final, and here's my S11 and S22. Now with that, I would like to share with you useful tips for you when you do EM optimization, how to do it efficiently, really fast, quickly, and efficiently, the process. One thing to remember, if, if you forget everything on those tips, number one is really important. I found it very useful. Use circuit tuning, not EM tuning, because EM, every, every trial you have to wait, you know, it depends on your circuit, how complicated it is. But you have to wait five minutes, 10 minutes, until a whole EM simulation run. So that's too long. So what I did, I used the circuit level simulation, uh, tuning. And I picked components and I tuned them really quickly and I see how they affect my goals. If I am optimizing for gain, if I want to optimize for gain, go through the tuning of every component and see my gain if it changes. Pick, pick the ones, the components that affect what you want to achieve, you know, your goals. This way you can eliminate a lot of components that are useless. They are not gonna affect what you're seeking for. Once you have this, 
minimize the number of optimization variables. When you do EM optimization, you don't want to have too many variables. EM optimization is very expensive in time. It takes longer. So you want to minimize by using step one, you can minimize the variables. Use discrete optimization. You don't want to use the optimization method as gradient. If you have a capacitor that you want to optimize, you don't want to go from 3 picofarad to 3.01 to 3.02. Every step takes a long time for EM to run. So you want to do discrete optimization, and you can say the capacitor, I want it from 3 to 4 picofarad, and I want the steps to be by 0.2 picofarad. So you have five total steps to go through. Now, that's what I just said about the range. Minimize the optimization range. So you go 3 to 4 by 0.2 instead of 0.1. This way, you, the range is, is less, and the number of steps of EM optimization is less. So it goes faster. Now, while, while optimization is running, you can monitor the value, how it goes up or it goes down. If that capacitor is going up to 4 picofarad, you can pause your optimization and change your range from 3.5 to 4.5 or from 4 to 5. So you can shift according to, to what you, you know, how your components are changing. And uh, optimize only on the required frequency. You don't want to overdo it and just optimize on a very large frequency. Just your spec, you know, that saves time. And this is very important too here. Notice this line, the green line. Let's say I want to optimize it from zero to 200 micron, that's the range. If, if it goes to zero, this spiral will hit this spiral. It will overlap on top of it, this, this line, if it gets shorter. And that's going to really ruin everything for you. It's going to give you bogus results. This, this spiral is going to hit this via. It's going to hit this spiral inductor. So when you, that when you pick the minimum and the maximum range value for each component, Make sure before you start the optimization that you don't get overlapping of components with that minimum value. But anyway, this, these are some useful tips. And I want to point out to you, if you go to the YouTube, there is a useful document that has more detail for you. And also that amplifier that I just showed you with the setup, you can download it if you want to actually use it for the setup or something. So this here, or you can just type in this in YouTube search, and it will find it for you. It just has more details for the process. So thank you very much. And if you have any question, you can see me now or after the talk, or you can ask me now. Excuse me? In the circuit, when you're doing optimization, uh, when you do, when, what you mean by partition is the EM circuit co-simulation, the new partitioning? Like the inductor on one side doesn't care about the coupling to the inductor on the other side, so draw partition lines and subdivide your circuit so you're not treating it as one giant mesh? Um, in this example I just showed, everything is meshed and all the coupling is accounted for. But there is an EM circuit uh, partitioning and co-simulation in ADS. Th this is a new feature where you can select that inductor to be s simulated at the circuit level instead of the EM level. And that would probably answer what you're seeking. Yeah. If, if you have any question, uh, detail, or you want to see a demo or something, stop by the booth. I will be there most of the time, and uh, I can show you. Thank you. Thank you very much.